Hi, I'm Michael Kurosh and welcome to Design Santa Barbara. This week we are in Santa Barbara Design Center and I'm joined by noted Santa Barbara historian and author Erin Graffy, who will be sharing the fascinating history of Santa Barbara Invention. Thank you very much for attending our show. Well, thank you for having me. This is very cool. Wonderful. Beautiful place here. Thank you. I love your books. There's so many books and you tell me it's just half what uh, you have about written? About half of what but these are, I was thinking of pretty books because this place is so beautiful, so I wanted the ones that would kind of go along with the decor here. I uh, bet you not only they're pretty, but also full of information about Santa Barbara. Uh, great information, because this town is, there's, everywhere you look, there's something to write about and something to know about. It's just such fabulous history. I love this town. I call it the paradise, and that's the reason we are here. It does not tell everybody that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Keep it quiet. We don't want other people to know. No, or else don't. if you come in as a tourist, you know that you will just wear the big red tee for tourists, spend your money here and then leave and then just save it for the rest <laughs> of us. I think that would work out really nicely <laughs> for the economy and everything else. Sounds good. So tell us a little bit about the health aspect of this town that maybe a lot of people don't know. Everybody looks fit, everybody looks healthy, and you mentioned few inventions that happened in Santa Barbara. Well, yeah, that fits right in because, you know, the place is beautiful. So you think of coming here because the weather is so climate, it's so temperate, it's perfect with degrees, it's sunny all the time. You feel like you're athletic, you're exercising. So it seems like this should be a good place for people interested in health. But even beside that, there's all the sort of scientific healthness if we could put it that way. And one of the very first things that Santa Barbara was known for was a health resort, health spa. We could actually go to the 19th century when they had um, the Hidden Valley Veronica water, Veronica Springs water, which was considered very medicinal and people came out for that or for the hot springs in uh, Montecito. But after the turn of the century in 1920, something very, very interesting happened that was really mind-boggling in the health field and that was uh, well, let's take a little trip up north to Canada the um, researchers there Banting and Best doctors Banting and Best who had uncovered or discovered or put together insulin for diabetics and they were freely at the, very interesting they were freely sharing all of their research which of course now you want to have a patent on it but uh, here in Santa Barbara, there was another doctor, because you know usually it's not one person researching on something on the health field, there'll be a number of people. And a wonderful man named Dr. William David Sansom, as in Sansom Clinic, was here, and he was hot on the topic to find a cure or fix for diabetes. At this time, Diabetes was type 1 juvenile onset diabetics, diabetes, meaning you were insulin dependent, so it wasn't type 2, but the prevalent, everybody had it, if you had it, was type 1, and it was a death sentence. So if it was juvenile onset, you probably would not make it to adulthood. Wow. So Dr. Sansom's hot on the trail. The doctors in uh, Canada, you know, isolate insulin and figure out this is what's going to do it. But here, because they shared that, uh, their formula, so to speak, Dr. Sansom took that and improved on it. His chemist figured out a way to... I'm probably describing this in the most basic, unscientific way, but made it how it could be more long-lasting in the body. Otherwise, you would be uh, taking your insulin perhaps every hour, every two hours, but now it could last longer. And when he did that, that this was here in Santa Barbara, the first place that insulin was manufactured and administered to diabetic patients. And as soon as that news hit the wires hit all over the United States. People flocked to Santa Barbara to be treated by Dr. Sansom and receive this life-saving insulin. Now a little corollary to that was his chemist was a Lebanese man, Dr. Sayoun. It was a very young guy, very intelligent, very smart. Got his doctorate degree, not in um, medical doctor, but you know, a PhD. PhD. And he stayed on in Santa Barbara and he had a little boy, he and his wife had a little boy, and the boy would take swimming lessons down at the plunge here, down on Cabrillo Boulevard. And, you know, kids going in the pool, they get little eye infections, so you keep running to the pharmacy. It was uh, Caldwell Pharmacy to get a little something for his eyes. And finally, the father, being a chemist, says to the pharmacist, what's in this, you know, prescription that he's taking? Is it stuff that we can get over the counter, so to speak? And so the chemist there says, pharmacist says, well, yeah, you know, this, that, and the other thing. 
So the father says, I could probably make my own mix and use it for my son. And from that, he developed and commercialized it. And we know it as Visine. Visine. So the Visine eye drops created and started here by the guy who was also working on insulin with Dr. Sansom. That's an amazing history. Actually, millions of people are affected. Yes, and Just yes, think about it. How many yeah. Visines have been sold worldwide yeah. <laughs> up to date? That's and right. Developed in Santa Barbara. And here in Santa Barbara. So I guess because it's so beautiful here, you want to see clearly. And so... <laughs> <laughs> But it's just the, the, this kind of a nice story of just, you know, right here and his kid is swimming in the plunge <laughs> down on Cabrillo Boulevard and, and that's where you get these uh, inventions. So the other story that you were going to tell us about was actually, which is interesting, is the Fergamo. That yes, again, so we're, okay, so here we are in Santa Barbara. It's looking good. We're looking good. We're healthy. We want to be well dressed. And so that would take you to clothes and shoes. And of course, all kinds of companies today that have start, started in Santa Barbara, Sarah West and Big Dog and Deckers and Ugg and shoes and all of these sort of bits. But actually, our fashion statement was made back in, well, really the teens, the late teens. And there were a couple of brothers that came here from Italy, the Ferragamo brothers, as in the Ferragamo shoes. They had a little store on, a little front store on State Street, I think near Carrillo. And in those days, you would go there for several things. You would have your clothes cleaned. I don't know that it was dry cleaning like today, but whatever, they would clean your clothes. You would have a tailor, so someone who would sew or adjust the clothes, and if possible, somebody who worked in shoes. So all these brothers had their specialty, and um, Salvatore Ferragamo, back in Italy, I think he had an interest early on, and he made shoes for his younger sister when she was going to receive her first communion. So I think even as a teeny bopper, he liked the idea of design and clothes. So here they were in Santa Barbara, and he's making shoes for the, uh, the actors and actresses who are with the Flying A Studio. And the actresses say, oh, these are nice shoes. And they'd come back and say, could you make something a little more special for me? And so he starts, you know, adding an extra piece of lace and bow and whatever you have you. And so he starts getting a following. And it was around the early 20s that he then moved down to Los Angeles. And of course, we know what happened thereafter. His business really took off. And Ferragamo Shoes is still going, you know, 100, almost 100 years later. To almost exactly 100 years later, come to think of it, from when they came to Santa Barbara. Which is amazing. Again, you go to Florence, that's where you, one of the places you go visit is Fergamo store. Ah. And here it is, the store in our beautiful Santa <laughs> we Barbara. We started it. So just next time you're there, just <laughs> let them know, well, you know, you didn't start it here. Yeah, that is new. <laughs> <laughs> so we learned about the health aspect of Santa Barbara. We learned about fashion. It's a big town for aviation. There's a lot of contractors. There's a lot of aerospace companies here. Maybe you explain to us a little bit about that. Well, that's fascinating about, uh, I have spoken on uh, for different clubs about our aviation history to kind of back up a little bit. Um, the very earliest aviators, when they're flying around, were coming to Santa Barbara, which I find quite astonishing because Santa Barbara was so small, remember, for so many years, still small compared to other cities. But we had some very famous aviators for those who went to aviation, Didier Masson and Lincoln Beachy. And this would be like 1912. They're here doing a show in aviation for Santa Barbara, and the population here was maybe 10,000, 9,000 people. So you think, what drew you to Santa Barbara? How did they come all the way to little Santa Barbara? And also in Santa Barbara at this time, there was a couple of brothers. Their, their mother was a writer for the local paper and they loved aviation. So it was a lot of people tootling around and trying to create their own flying machine, as it was known as. And uh, their name was, they were Scottish, Irish actually. Um, uh, Luged was sometimes how it was pronounced. And they got together an aircraft and they took it to the Panama Exposition um, up in San Francisco, 1915 and they're offering rides for people for $10. Well, $10 was a lot of money back then. But from that, they collected so much. It was a 10-minute ride, I think, for $10. And people were like, whoa, going up in this machine, going all over San Francisco, you know, seeing what it looks like from the air. And they raised enough money to come back here and start manufacturing more planes. Interestingly, 
a plane couldn't be flown from Santa Barbara to San Francisco because the planes didn't have that long of a range. So they'd have to disassemble the plane, put the fuselage and the wings on a train, ship it up to San Francisco, and then shipped it back down here. But they did start making their planes here. And they had a young guy that was out of Santa Barbara High School that was interested in design. And he was helping them as they're kind of like an engineer designer. His name was Jack, and he used to watch the seagulls on, East, on West Beach and would get ideas for how to design the plane based on, you know, how the bird balances itself. Well, to cut the short, longer story short, these brothers decided to change up the name, pronunciation of their name, because when you look how it was spelled, it was too awkward, and they moved to Los Angeles to continue their, um, their building of their airplanes, and we know them as Lockheed. And so that started here. They built the a little story connecting back to our Flying A studio. They built the F-1, first fighter plane, and it was christened by one of the stars from the Flying A studio. Her name was Mary Miles Minter, but she was only 16, 17 years old. She was underage, so instead of using a bottle of champagne, it was grape juice. So, <laughs> and they officially <laughs> launched that plane. And by the way, that young boy that was helping them, I shouldn't say young boy, it was a young Mr. man. Mr. Jack. Jack was Jack Northrup. So he oh, went I down know. to Los Angeles and he started his own aviation bit. So we have a lot of that uh, fascinating start early on with aviation in the very early years. But continue on pretty much for the rest of the century. We, of course, we had the great era of um, the 1970s where we had the super guppies, those planes that look like they look like something, like a very looks pregnant like a whale. temple. <laughs> it looks like a <laughs> whale. And you're thinking, there's no way this thing could get off the ground. Um, my father was a pilot. That's how we came to Santa Barbara. He was a test pilot, and he was heading up uh, General Electric's missile systems, testing systems, here on the West Coast, and, and came in here. And my father would always explain, well, an airplane can go because of speed and thrust, and the air over the wings helps more than the air under the wings. But for those of us who are not in area, <laughs> aviation, we go, there's no way those things can fly. No way something that heavy can fly. But he had lots of interesting stories that then tap into our Santa Barbara history. He was flying some people, and I can't remember what the reason was that they were here, but he was their pilot. And they were staying at a place called uh, Hidden Valley Ranch. We have a couple Hidden Valley areas here in Santa Barbara. We have one in Montecito, and we have one off of uh, Modoc, Las Positas area. But the other one is when you're going up 154, and you don't have to get way the heck up there, but you see that the road kind of goes down as you're heading up, and you can see a pool there. That's Hidden Valley Ranch. So my father's taking the pilots there, uh, the piloting the people there, and would go to pick them up and stay for lunch. And they would serve the salad with this amazing salad dressing. So everybody is wondering, you know, what is this? It's the people who own the place. That was our own invention. And then he started saying, could I take some of this home? And I guess probably the other guests there. So they start packaging it up. And this stuff was just absolute wonder wonderfulness and bringing it home. I was a little kid who didn't want to eat my vegetables, even my salad. But once they brought home the Hidden Valley Ranch dressing, man, everything could go down. And of course, then it did, did become um, commercialized. They sold it to uh, a big conglomerate. But I tell you, those of us who have had the original, the, even the really good stuff that you make from the packet, which is much better than when you get it bottled, as you all know, but the stuff that was the original, um, it was that much better. As, so. There you so have Hidden it. Valley Ranch started actually right in the mountains of Santa Barbara. Right here. So it was our own Hidden Valley. Exactly. I have had a few of those pounds extra <laughs> in my belly. So yeah, I know. <laughs> Delicious stuff. Just to show you that Santa Barbara has good taste and good tasting things, right? <laughs> no, that's true. That's absolutely fascinating. When we come back, we will have a lot more to discuss. Stay tuned.